morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Indeed, it's a pleasure for me to be here with you this morning. Amen. As you've heard, it's not the first time. I remember the last time I preached, not just being here, but the last time I preached here, um, I had to preach from the outside because we were working on the building. Amen. And um, I think you were preparing for some event. I can't recall if it was some convention or something. But of course, you needed church to be up and ready. Praise God. And the brethren had to say on the outside, amen. But just look at you now. Praise God. Amen. I'm really, really grateful for this invitation. Matter of fact, um, I was invited earlier in the year. But because of the pandemic that has disrupted a number of activities and events and also affected a number of church activities. Amen. But to God be the glory. Come on, lift your hands and worship Jesus. Great and marvelous things he has done. Amen. I'm sure you know so if you have to stretch you get to the mic. But you understand. Amen. I want to apologize to my family not being here this morning. Um, they have some activities to do at church today, and so they are not here, but I'm here to worship with you. Amen. And uh, I indeed enjoy the worship. Amen. Um, I felt like jumping and shouting, but the time is a little bit warm. Amen. And uh, of course, we just raise our hands and just love the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Is this on? Amen. So we just want to also just want to greet those as well who are, who are online with us worshiping. Um, I just want to tell you that the Lord is good. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Amen. I think I can work with this one. Praise God. Praise God. Thanks to your pastor, my good friend. Reverend Nemai, for giving me this invitation. Amen. Praise God, a wonderful man of God. And um, he's just working for the Lord. Amen. We just want to turn to a passage of scripture today in Psalm 42. Psalm 42 from verse 1 to verse 5 is where the word of God is coming to us from today. Amen. So when you're found it, you say amen. Psalm 42. I don't hear anybody saying amen yet. If you have, if you are not there, say I'm getting there. Praise God. Psalm 42 from verse 1 to verse 5. And it reads thus. As the heart panted after the water brooks, so panted my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When, I, when shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with a voice of joy and praise, with the multitude that kept the holiday. Why art thou cast down? O oh, my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Come on, everybody, say hope. Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. The word of the Lord we honor by saying, thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Father of God, we thank you for your words, Lord. Lord, I thank you that your words have already been blessed and anointed, God. I pray that today, Lord, you'll anoint me, your servant. That as I deliver your words to your people today, Lord, hearts will be blessed, souls will be edified. And God, your words will indeed penetrate, oh God, the very recesses of our hearts today. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. And the people of God say, amen. Praise God. Amen. I love to see Deacon, Deacon, right? Who just came here a while ago, Deacon, who introduced me. Um, I was looking for him from the very moment I got here. Amen. Um, he used to play music, right? He plays the music, yeah. And I was saying, only somebody may know, may know anything here was perhaps Deacon. I can't remember seeing this gentleman on the, the keyboard. So I was saying, I want him there. But thanks be to God, he's here. Amen. I was looking to see persons, you know, who I would know. Um, but his most strange faces I'm seeing. Um, it's been a while since I've been here, but I know a few people. Amen. Praise God. Are you here with me this morning? Come on, lift up your hands and worship God. Hallelujah. Come on, church of God. It's time to worship. Come on. Tell somebody it's time to worship. Oh, we give God praise. Amen. We give God praise. Come on. We don't want anybody to sleep in the house of God today. Amen. I, I saw you worshiping. Come on, church of God. Hallelujah. Come on. You don't know me, but I love to make noise in the house of the Lord. Come on. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Seeking after God in the midst of this stress. Come on and talk to me in the church. And I thought, uh, where's Deacon? Um, I saw him he earlier who welcomed me. No man, um, Reeves. Is it the elder? elder? Is there too? Reeves. I don't see him. Oh, I'm the man. I, 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 I thought I heard him saying something about praising God in distress. Amen. I don't know, but I thought I heard him saying that earlier. Praise God. And hear the word of God today. Seeking after God in the midst of distress. Come on, the people of God. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about this morning. Amen, church of God. Come on, lift up your hands and begin to worship God. Hallelujah. Those online this morning, just lift your hands above your heads and worship God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, somebody better say that he's worthy this morning. Come on, he's worthy in the house of the Lord. I don't care the condition you're in this morning. I'm here to say that he is worthy today. Come on, the church of God. Hallelujah. Hey, come on, don't, don't, don't sit and look at me like that this morning. Come on, lift up your hands above your heads and worship God. Come on, the people of God. Come on, he's worthy. You're in the homes this morning. God is worthy. You're in the house of God today. He's worthy. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Come on, church of God. Come on. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. It's one thing to worship God when everything is going right. But it's another thing to worship God. Even in the midst of your distress. Even in the midst of your storm, you can worship God. Oh, somebody praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, praise is not circumstantial. It's not only when things are good, you praise God. But when things are bad, very, very bad, we can still lift our hands and praise the name of the Lord. Oh, praise God. Seeking after God in the midst of distress. Oh, hallelujah. 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 You know, sometimes the prophet brings a word to discourage. Amen. But it's, uh, it always have a condition. Amen. But I hear God saying it's time to encourage the people of God. Oh, praise God. I say it's time to encourage the people of God. There's, there's somebody this morning. There's somebody who needs a word of encouragement. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. And it's time to encourage somebody in the house of the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Seeking after God. Come on, say with me. Seeking after God in the midst of distress. Come on, those here lying. Seeking after God in the midst of distress. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise be to the name of the Lord. You know, 
I get to understand, amen, and I've preached a sermon before, amen, on Samson, praise God. And you know, when it comes on to Samson, and you know the history of the story, or the, the, the account of Samson, praise God, amen, and that Samson, praise God, he was there and he got deceived and amen along the way amen when he was locked up that they, they had him and took him to be sport you remember that en entire story of Samson and that the enemy had him amen entertaining the people uh, praise God uh, in that big temple praise God because you see the enemies this uh, amen is to kick us like a ball praise God and the ball players in the house of God that's what the enemy wants to do to the people of God. To get us at a place, praise God, where he can take us for sport and laugh at us and mock us, praise God. And just laugh at us while we are in some low situations. Kick us like a ball. Have us for sport. The account in the Bible, the woman at the well was told by Jesus in St. John chapter 4 that, amen, should she accept the water that he gives to her, she will never thirst again. Oh, somebody bless the name of the Lord. Should she accept that water that Jesus Christ was offering to her, that she would never thirst again. She would never need, amen, to keep drawing because it will be a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Praise God. And that's the kind of water, that's the kind of blessings that Jesus came to offer. Amen. Something that when you receive it, it will be spring up in, in, into everlasting life. That amen. She was told, praise God, that you don't need to have to go and keep drawing water. She would never need to keep drawing because it will be a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. There's a difference, brothers and sisters, between a well and a river. Because, amen, when it comes on to a well, you have to keep going back, amen, to draw, amen. But the river, it keeps flowing it's nonstop. Are you there with me this morning? Are you there with me this morning? Water is essential for physical life. So also, God and his presence are essential for satisfaction and wellness of life. And true believers, true believers at times, praise God, will hunger and thirst for God and his grace. Are you still with me? His blessings and his supernatural empowerment in this life. As true believers, brothers and sisters, there are times when we become hungry and thirsty. Come on. I don't know if you have anybody in here this morning who at times you feel hungry. You feel thirsty after God. You are in the midst of the people of God. You are in the congregation of Almighty God. But there are times when you feel, um, and that it doesn't matter what is going on. Ah, uh, you're feeling a longing. You're feeling a thirsty, uh, a thirsting. Um, and you're feeling as though there is something inside of us. Um, and that it doesn't matter what is happening on the platform. Um, and it doesn't matter what is happening in the house of God. You're just feeling withdrawn. You're feeling as though, um, and you're far away from the action. I don't think I have any in here who ever felt that way before oh somebody praise God where it doesn't matter what is happening in the house of God there's a longing there's a thirsting amen and you're feeling as though you're all on your own and there's a crowd in the room and people are praising God people are lifting up hands they're worshiping but in yourself you're feeling as though you're far away from all the action that is going on 
Sometimes as Christians, you find yourself in a situation where you feel dry. You feel thirsty. You are feeling as if God has departed from your lives. And all you're reaching out, you're feeling as though there is no connection. It looks like I don't have nobody up here so we know them something there. You're feeling as though you're all on your own. Empty and broken. Sitting aside. Praise God. The psalmist has found himself in a situation where his soul is feeling cast down. Praise God. Oh, you ever hear a song say, when I'm low in the spirit, I cry, Lord, lift me up. But I guess the psalmist didn't have that song right at the time. But now he's feeling low. He's feeling down. He's feeling as though, amen. I'm all alone out there. Amen. I'm just sitting down in limbo. Praise God. I'm just feeling low in my spirit. But I don't know how to cry out to God. Sometimes when you're low in your spirit, amen, you're feeling down. You're feeling Feeling arm and low and down and dying. Praise God. And you need some help. Praise God. And even though you know your help comes from the Lord. In the situation that you're in. Praise God. It is difficult to reach out. And to cry out to God Almighty. I believe that's how the man of God found himself. In Psalm 42. Down. Low. Psalmist was in exile from the temple, the place of worship. Praise God. Amen. This is the house of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. The psalmist was feeling down. He was feeling low because he was now in exile, away from the house of God, away from the people of God. Praise God. You know, I have a, a brother in my church. Amen. Having been in the hospital for months, I think he was going about two years on and off from the hospital. Praise God. And I remember one Sunday morning as he was churning. Amen. For the first time in about two years to the house of God as he came around the corner and he saw the building I was sitting on the platform I saw him in tears walking down to the house of God having been away from the house of God I don't know if you understand what it means as people of God to be away from the house of God for maybe years or months amen having been away from God's house because because this is God's house. Amen. This is where the people of God in the community comes. Amen, brothers and sisters. And we come to praise God. We come to exalt God. We come to lift God up. Amen. Sometimes at home, it is difficult all by yourself. But when you come, amen, in the presence of God. Amen. When you come into God's sanctuary, uh, then be gospel assembly. And you see your brothers and your sisters it gives you a good feeling amen church of God and you can lift up your hand among your people and praise your God even when you're in distress you feel strong when you come among your brothers and your sisters for worship praise God just imagine the psalmist this morning amen he used to come with his brothers and sisters but this morning is in exile away from the house of God not able to come into worship and he's feeling down in, his, in, him, in himself uh, if he didn't have Zoom them time they would have helped him too amen church of God but he no had no Zoom. Amen, church of God. Sitting down without internet. Amen. No connectivity. But he's there in his house. Uh, exile from the house of God. And the Bible says he's feeling down. He attributed this poem to the sons of Korah. A musical family in Israel. The family descended from Amen, the priest who had led an abortive rebellion against Moses and Aaron. 
in, the, in Numbers chapter 16. You can read that for your nightly devotion tonight. Numbers chapter 16. Amen. When Korah led, praise God, an abortive rebellion against the man of God. Amen. I guess he thought, amen, that Moses having led them out of Egypt, praise God, they started complaining about the situation, complaining and believing that it's only Moses and Aaron God is using to lead them. So Korah get up and amen, he mustered up 200 and odd other leaders and came against Moses. But when Moses declared, Amen, the hand of God upon Korah, praise God, it wasn't a nice feeling at the end of it. But you can read for yourself. God's judgment came upon Korah and his companions, but Korah's family continued for hundreds of years to be some of the greatest leaders of worship music in Israel. I love the worship this morning. It's in worship easy, take holy by energy. Amen, church of God. Worse is summer, we have little church. And this is the same people every week. You be kill you. Hello? You saw this sister, them sweat and wet, them wet up this morning. Praise God. It's difficult. Amen. But Korah's family was the prison worship family. One of the major ones in Israel. Praising God in the midst of distress. I just want us to look at three things quickly. And the first thing that we see in the text is a longing for God's presence. Are you still there with me? I wonder if you're hearing me. The mic so like we can hardly hear myself. A longing for God's presence. Are you still there with me? That's the first thing we're seeing this morning. A longing for God's presence. Now, to stop first thing for God is to die spiritually. Are you still there with me? You don't want to, to die a spiritual death. Come on and talk to me in the church of God. I'm saying to us today that to stop first thing for God is to do what? To die spiritually. Are you still there with me? We must not allow anything or anyone to stop Amen. Our intense desire for the things of Almighty God. Come on and talk to me in the church. We don't come, we don't want nobody. We can't allow anybody if you stop with. Amen, church of God. To stop the hunger that is inside of us. To stop the thirst inside of us. To seek after God. Are you still there with me, brothers and sisters? We must not allow anything or anybody to stop that intense desire that we have. Praise God. And we have also have to beware. Beware of the cares of this world. The pleasures, amen, that, that choke out the hunger and thirst for God. And the desire to seek his face. According to Mark 4.19. Praise God. We don't want anything to block us or to stop us. Or to, amen, diminish the desire that is inside of us. The God-given desire for us. Amen. To go on our knees. To seek after God. For the living God. Come on, church of God. To go and say, Lord, I'm in your presence, Lord. Here I am in your presence. Seeking after you today. Come on. Amen. I just want to be in your presence. Oh, daily in your presence. Praise God this morning. We don't want anything to kill that desire because every child of God should have a desire to seek God. To pant is unusually expressive of a spiritual thirst for God. A spiritual thirst for God. And the writer described his experience of being cut off from the worship community. Praise God. To be cut off 
from the worship community. Praise God. Imagine this morning ah, that somebody tell you a pastor come one morning and tell you that look here brother, look here sister you are no longer welcome here. Amen. Steer your yard. Praise God. And imagine further that this is the only place of worship. Praise God. That you can attend and you are told to stay away for whatever purpose, whatever reason. Done. my God cut off from the worship experience cut off from the community worship he felt this distant from God's presence and he is now he now has a longing to be close to God in verse 4 praise God amen church of God the Bible says Enoch walk with God. You never see death. Come on, the church of God. You want to be close to him. Come on. I guess many times you come here and you sing close to thee, close to thee. Praise God. Everybody, if you're a child of God, your desire, your longing should be wanting to be close to God. Come on, the church of God. I say as a Christian, you want to be close to God. You don't want to be far away from God. Amen. You want to be close to Jesus Christ, where you can walk with him, you can talk with him. Amen. He can tell you that you are his own and you can worship him in the beauty of holiness. Amen. And then again, you understand that he died for your sins. Amen. And dying for your sins, he paved the way for us that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Every one of us and cry, Abba, Father, praise God. But imagine that this morning he would have been distant away from you praise God as a child of God you're not feeling the closeness you're not feeling amen that desire uh, that that anointing that connection with him uh, I just imagine you'll be running up this morning and crying out and say Lord I want to be close to thee all along my pilgrim's journey only let me walk with thee. Come on, the church of God. You see, I don't want anything else. If I don't get anything else, I just want to know that on this journey, praise God, I'll be close to my God. Amen. When I can call to him in the morning, call to him in the evening, call to him anytime, and knowing that he's hearing and he's there. Are you still there with me, brothers and sisters? He felt distant from God's presence and is now feeling as though he's in limbo. The other thing I want to talk about is as we see an emotional journey being away from God's presence. You just imagine you'll become emotional now, not you. Amen. Pastor says, stay your yard. No come to church. No Zoom, no internet. Amen. You're in exile. Uh, praise God. If you're not crying or breaking down bars, something wrong with you. Pray. It means that you never have no connection in the first place to God. Praise God. But if I'm told not to come to God's house, I'll be broken. Praise God. I'll be going down on my knees, crying out, bawling. Come on, church of God. I'll be crying day and night like the man of God. The writer said his tears have been his meat day and night. Ah, while the people taunt him and saying unto him, where is your God? Praise God. He's now sitting down. Ah, I mean, I just imagine he goes to his bed. Praise God. I don't know if you've ever been in, a, in some situations that when you go to your bed, ah, you don't even know you were crying until you, you feel tears running down on your face and tears going on your pillow. Praise God. I don't know if you know if you've ever been there before in your Christian journey when your tears become your meat. Amen. Ah, tears running down. I don't know if you know the taste of tears that it is salty. Cruel. Oh, you don't understand what I'm talking about. It seems like you've never tasted your tears before. Yes, it's salty. Amen. Ah, when you're in trouble and tough times and you cry, praise God. As the writer says, my tears have been my meat day and night. Amen. Ah, crying out there in limbo, crying all alone. Praise God. Locked 
wrapped up in exile. Come on, crying out. His tears become his food. Uh, I just imagine not able to eat. He's not able to drink now, but he's trying tears. He's now tasting his very tears. Amen. Praise God. He says, my tears have been my meat day and night. Not only that, but while they say continually unto me, where is your God? Oh, you understand me? I talk about the devil love kick people like a ball. Hello? You know, I'm in a group. The Christian and Ministers Fraternal. And, uh, you know, the happenings of the time. The church happenings of the time that is everywhere. If you go to online, you'll find it. You don't have to go far to find it. You, you, you're going to the barber shop, you'll find it. Because I was in the barber shop up to yesterday, and they know I'm a pastor. And of course, they're going to question me because anytime I go, they want me to preach to them. Praise God. And they're asking me what is my opinion and so on and so forth. I texted in the group when somebody posted a video. And I said, and they were asking questions. And I said, yes, everybody can get forgiveness if they so ask God for it. Are you still there with me? And I was saying, the gentleman who committed whatever the offense is, alleged offense, that he too, like Samson, who the enemy had as a public spectacle, Samson received his forgiveness, you know. So I was saying he too can get his forgiveness. That was the night before he crashed and died. Well, in the Baba Shop last night, said no did. So I said, unless him a God Almighty himself. Hello? So I said, everybody can get forgiveness if they so ask of God. But the enemy's desire as Christians, young men, young women, hello, is to put us into the public spectacle and laugh at us. Amen, church of God. Not only that, but it's amen when you find yourself on the platform preaching for God. You don't understand what I'm talking about. Ah, when God has anointed you, like on the praise and worship team, amen, in the leadership core, if the enemy can get us out there, amen, and have us as our school teacher put a child into a corner ah, and punish this child and say, you sit down there, sir. Praise God, I'm going to discipline you. But not only that, but when they put you out here on the corridor to sit down and your friends walking by and they see you standing there, they know that you're on punishment. Praise God. And so they laugh at you. <laughs> oh, someone you never put on a corner. Okay. Well, me, 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 teacher, put me a corner already. I was so innocent like some of you. Amen, church of God. All your friends see you um, in the past and them laugh at you. Praise God. That is how the enemy wants to put us in a corner as children of God and kick us like a ball. Uh, have us as public spectacle, as sport, and people laugh at you and they mock you and they say, where you got there? You who have preached for so many years. You who are lead for praise and worship for so many years. You who amen, are ushering for so many years. You who were anointed amen, for so many years. Where is your God? Is that see, it seems like your God dead. Hello? So what happened to you now? You're sitting down. You used to ride your high horse. But look at you now. The writer found himself in a situation where he's, he was now sitting down. And people, um, and having remembered the status of the gentleman, looked at him and said, I oh, look like your God dead. Oh, you... Look like I couldn't be no know. Look like I couldn't know me at all this morning. I look like I've a chat patwa up in a Clarendon. Amen. For you don't know what I'm talking about. Ah, God, Amen has anointed you, and now you find yourself sitting down in a little corner, like a school bikini, being punished, and your friends, your peers walking by. Eh, eh, who are you? Your good friends, you know, me say your friends, your very friends. The people you and them walk up to church, them see you out the road, out of the big tire, sitting on the tire. Come on and talk to me in the church. Uh, looking droopy, looking like the man who 
the insurance. I don't, you know, advertise again. So I'm going to remember so much. Who the insurance find him uh, lacking, wanting them, see how he used to work uh, for many years and see him, you know, what they call him, brother, what? I don't know. When him? Me hear somebody saying something when we can hear. But the mass. So the gentleman worked for many years and never have no savings and found himself sitting down selling, selling shamai. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh my God. People ridiculing him. I want to you, Lord God of mercy. Kuya, kuya, kuya. A sister so and so that, Lord boy. Then you used so jump up. And then big gospel assembly, big and powerful dress, nice. Then I want to you, Lord Mrs. Lord of mercy for you. Come on and talk to me, the church people. Why are you going like you know, innocent like you know, the church people? So, come on, some people they laugh. Hello, some not everybody going pass and pass good remarks. There are those who will be laughing and say, Lord have mercy. Then I will, I will take you now. This is how I am to you now, Mrs. Oh my God, just imagine the writer this morning. Just imagine the man of God today. The writer says, his tears have been his meat day and night. While they continually say unto him, where is your God? It looked like for you God dead. Because having done what you did and look at you now, for you God no seem like him have no power at all. Look at you sitting down in limbo. Where is your God? It's one thing when you are always you are far from God, God's presence. Amen. It's another thing when people compound the pressure you are feeling, mocking you, um, and you're expecting your friends to come and encourage you. Praise God, but all they come in and say, Master, if I did me, me take my life. You don't understand some people, all them wicked. Amen. Um, you're down in your situation. And instead of encouraging you in your circumstances, you have them coming to tell you otherwise. And say, me will take this, Master. Me that run away, gone. Come on and talk to me in the church. And so the man of God sitting down, perhaps expecting some encouraging words. And all that he's faced with. Is discouragement. Old Testament times, there were only there was only one place of worship of the Lord, one true place of worship of the Lord, and that was the temple in Jerusalem. Uh oh, hello, hello. You can run for your soul and go to over there. So come on and talk to me in a church. You don't have Zoom. Amen. No connection. And you don't have another place that you can go and sit in another congregation. Nowadays, praise God, if you just pass somebody and bounce them looking too hard, you know, see them next Sunday morning. When you check it out, them have choices. But this man only had one place of worship. Praise God, there's only one dedicated place of worship in Jerusalem. And so, amen, he was now in limbo. All alone. And what a, what a nice feeling it was. You listen to my English. What a nice feeling it was. Hello? What a nice feeling it was to go with the multitude to the place of worship among countless others with joyful believers amen i just imagine they were just quoting psalm 100 as they walk along the way come on it looked like someone who walk alone come to church but but you're walking with a multitude i um, mean you're walking with some of your friends and you're just dear happy and you're joyful i um, mean i think deacon reeves should know those days when people walk to church together Amen. And praising God and quoting psalms and hymns and singing songs. I don't, you look like me too old. Amen. But you're so 
show yourself. Or, or sometimes when you come into the house of God, praise God, and you hear the worship singers, you can't stop no time. You're running to church. I saw me the turn. Praise God, me not like late for church. Me like today from the start. Amen. Because when you're there from the start, you get everything. You get all the worship experience that is that, that there is. So the writer sitting down, remembering the joyful days, the good old days. I guess he was saying those were the days. Hello. Now, generally, in the book of Psalm, the focus of worship was the community worshiping together. If you look in Acts 2, 40 to 47, the community worshiping together. Praise God. So the entire community would be coming out. Praise God. To come to the place of worship. The dedicated place of worship. In Denby Gospel Assembly. Where there is no other dedicated places of worship. Amen. So when you come together. You just enjoy the walk to church. But now. Amen. Having no other alternative. Amen. No Zoom. No this, no that, no YouTube. Amen. Um, you're all on your own sitting down at home and perhaps hearing your friends passing your house. Amen. The very ones who used to stop by and ask if you're ready yet. Passing with joyful singing. Amen. Um, quoting psalms and hymns and passing you. And no, you can't go with them again this morning. My God. I don't know if you're feeling it for the service like I'm feeling it this morning. Put yourself in a position. Hello? Because some people in the master, you know, say some people are mad right now because they can't go to church. There's a number of people all over the world. Hello? Who get mental because what? Locked away. Can't go to church. Hello? Are you never here then today yet? I don't know if you read a part to some man. Ask your friend if it's true. Yes. It's not easy to be locked out. Locked away. Praise God. And sometimes God knows that the only place where you are your friend them is the only place you can come and feel welcome. Come on, talk to me in a church. The only place where you can come and feel appreciated. Come on, talk to me in a church. Amen. But now you're at your home. And your friends passing you by. Clapping, singing. Going up to the place of worship. Jesus, just imagine, just imagine sitting down, reflecting on those days when you and others would have attended God's place of worship, but now you are sitting alone. You can't go with your friends anymore, and people taunting you, amen, on top of that, saying to you, where you got there? In Jamaica, you do a Jamaican to pass your yard, you know. If the English them say, oh, I think your God is somewhere out there. Where, where is your God? But in Jamaica, they look by your tree to your yard and say, oh, where your God there? You look like he did. <laughs> that even had to, you know, that pierce your heart. Jamaicans have a weird, just tell you how you go. Hello? Them say, tell you what upon your mind. Are you still there with me? Are you still with me, brothers and sisters? Where is your God? Where is the God of whom you spoke about? Amen. He is a deliverer. But now, amen, you're locked out in lockdown. Where is your deliverer? You speak, you spoke to me about your God who is your provider, but you don't have nothing this morning. And you'll be saying, where is your God? Come on, talk to me, church. You're telling me about a God who cares, but now you're sitting down crying all alone. Where is your God? You're talking to me about a God who empowers, but now I'm low in my spirit. Ah, uh, where is is your God. You're talking about a God. Amen. Who, who is closer than a brother. But now I'm feeling as though I'm alone. Where is God? Where is God? Where is that anointer? Where is that empowerer? Where is that savior? Look like him dead. 
Oh God, you'll be, it will be compounding your feeling this morning. Praise God when you when you know the God in who you serve. Come on, and you're, you're feeling as though them just taking the hammer, um, and hammering it on you, them beating it on you, they licking you with it. Amen. Um, church of God, compounding the situation. It look like your God powerless. I have some people glad to build upon that, you know, powerless. Finally, we see. No, there's nobody clapping. Let me say, finally. Boys who don't know. Oh, thank God I don't have anybody up like that up here. Amen, Church of God. Yes, I soon close. I didn't ask the close. I didn't remember to ask Pastor the closing time. Oh, you notice me now. See and have you till three o'clock, right? Finally, we see a self defining moment. A self defining moment moment you ever hear them say introspect look within amen amen church of God everybody need a time when you sit down and look in yourself come on not somebody them say check yourself before you wreck yourself hallelujah somebody we see in verse 5 a self-defining moment sometimes praise God you need to begin to talk to yourself come on I don't know if you have any people up here in church who talks to yourself at times but you have to have a time praise God when your mouth is moving like Hannah praise God you're talking to yourself or you're talking to God or you're just talking you're walking in the streets and your mouth is moving or something I want to say I want to even think me mad hello Oh, I mean, nobody, oh, 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 I want somebody to talk to yourself. Hello? Hello? Come on, people of God. You ever talk to yourself yet? Have you ever spoken to yourself yet? Amen. Oh, look here. Sometimes you have to speak to yourself and say, look yourself. Amen. Oh, I shall not die, but live and declare. When you know the enemy wants to destroy you, oh, praise God, you talk to yourself and say, come on, self. You have to get up and get going this morning. Oh, you don't understand me sometimes. Oh, how you feel, you don't even feel like coming to the house of God. Praise God, but you have to begin to talk to yourself and say, look yourself, we're going to church. A self-defining moment. You have to speak over yourself. Come on, the church of God. I shall not die, but live and declare. Come on, the church of God. I shall not go on, but I shall overcome. Praise God. Amen, church of God. Come on. Oh, I shall not die. Amen. Talk to yourself and tell yourself some encouraging words. Amen. And you speak to God and you speak yourself and say, I shall overcome someday. You have to speak to yourself. I have a quote that I, I don't know if I've, I've never heard it anywhere. But I made it years ago at one of my churches. If you don't get up, you can't get going. Sit down in any situation, you never get out. Come on, a church of God. Sometimes you find yourself in some pit. Praise God. You're waiting. Amen. Um, are the devil waiting? Amen. Um, for them to come and try you out and sell you into slavery. Amen. Um, but sometimes you have to try your way to come out. You don't just stay down there. Praise God. You help yourself up and say, Look here. I go and try my very best, but I shall not stay here. I shall, I shall, I will get up and I will get going. The writer is feeling low in his spirit, but he's now about to pick himself up, brush himself off, and he's about to get going again, brothers and sisters. He cried out, Amen, by himself. He was there and he said, Why art thou cast down, O oh, my soul? Come on, I talk to him in the church. Why are you cast down? We will see the words. Amen. Um, these very words repeated in verse 11. We will see it repeated in chapter 43, verse 5. Why art thou 
cast down, oh my soul, hope thou in almighty God. You don't know, brothers and sisters, the assurance that it gives when the writer says, why art thou cast down, oh my soul, hope thou in God. There is hope at the look at the crucified one. There's hope at the cross for you this morning. I, I don't care what situation you find yourself in. As a child of God, there is hope in Jesus Christ. You just stand up. You brush yourself off. You speak yourself and say, look here. Ah, oh, glory to God. I shall make it. Ah, oh, by the grace of God, I'm going to make it. Ah, oh, with Jesus, I shall make it. With Jesus, I shall stand. No matter what comes my way, my life is in his hand. And when your life is in the hand of God, praise God. Amen. Just like he said to his disciples, once he is on your boat, praise God, your ship, amen, he will not go under because Jesus is on board. And that the disciples them forget to remember, you know. Them run down there. Boy, boy, master, you know, see the way dead. You know, care. Carry us not down that we die. But then should I know, say, when Jesus step on the ship with them, hello? Oh, sorry, um, you know, I know, you know, I now my list the responses, but because of the mask wearing, it's difficult. So sorry. But but I'm that type of preacher who likes when you talk back. Amen, Church of God. But I know it's done with the difficulty. Praise God. But, but when you can't talk, you lift your hands. See, okay. Um, and let me know. So you hear what I said this morning. That when Jesus is on your ship, praise God. It doesn't matter what storm clouds may rock the ship of yours. Hallelujah, somebody. The ship will not go under, but you shall not die. You shall live and declare the works of Almighty God. Jesus walking on the sea. Amen. And the storm rose up. And Peter walking. And the minute he take him eye off of Jesus, himself sink. But he never knows, sir. Eh? The storm was just a little distraction. Come on and talk to me. Uh, the enemy have a way uh, meant to create a little distraction for you to take your eyes off of Jesus. For you to forget that there is hope in Jesus. For you to forget that once Jesus is on board, you will not go under. Him create a little storm. Come on and talk to me in the church. There's always a little distraction here. A little distraction over there. And when you look at the distraction, you find yourself sinking. But when you put your eye back on Jesus, hallelujah, look straight in his wonderful face. The things of this world, the distractions, strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? There is hope in Jesus Christ. I'm in church of God. The man of God is reminding himself that one day, one day, he will again experience a new the presence and power of Almighty God in his life. One day, you will experience a new the power and the presence of God. Praise God. He's having hope. He's saying to himself that, amen, my hope is built and nothing less than Jesus Christ and righteousness. Oh, I do not trust a sweetest rain, but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. So let me stand with Christ, no man. Let me steer with him, no man. Because one day, if I not, I live, Jesus Christ is going to come and he's going to take me home. Don't lock me out of worship. Come on, church of God. Don't send me away from worship. Praise God, because if you lock me out of worship, if you send me away from worship, I'm going to go down deep within me and know that I can cry out to Almighty God. But there is hope in Jesus. There is hope in God. There is hope. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The conquering line of the tribe of Judah. The one who breaks chains. 
Break every chain. Break every chain. Oh, glory to God. Come on, the church of God. Oh, you're low in your spirit this morning. Anybody here, you're low in your spirit. Oh, praise God. Come on, there is hope in Jesus Christ. Come on, it's time for you to begin to seek after God. Amen. Seeking after that which, amen, will fill you up. Oh, somebody say, fill my cup, Lord. Oh, fill it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirst in of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. You don't understand when some people sit down and pen those songs. Uh, it's because they have been there and they understand the need to reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. Sometimes when you're low, amen, it needs for you to, to, to go into the deep recesses of, of yourself and encourage yourself in the Lord. Oh, are you there with me this morning? Seeking after God in the midst of distress. I'm here to encourage somebody today. You're in here in the congregation. You're there on Zoom or whatever other platform there is. There is hope in Jesus Christ. There is hope at the look of the crucified one. There's hope at the cross for you. There may be those today you're here. You're not saved. And you're feeling like the writer this morning. Locked away. From all that is happening here today. You don't even feel like you can lift your hands and worship God. Come on. Are you here today? Praise God. I want to invite somebody up. I don't know if we can invite people to the platform. Do we? You don't have to come. You can't always raise your hand. If you're here, you're not safe. I'm going to pray for you today. Is anybody here? You're not safe. And you want me to wave to, to pray for you especially. Um, and you want to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. Just lift up your hand. Let me see quick. You're not safe. You're feeling like this right to this morning. You're locked out. You're locked out. You're here, but you're feeling far away. You don't have Jesus. Are you here today? Praise God. Praise God. You may be a child of God, and you're here today, and you just want me to pray for you. I don't know your name, but I'll pray for you. You're here today, and you're not feeling well. Hallelujah. Yes, that's one that I'm going to be praying for. I'm going to pray for those who are sick as well. You're not feeling well. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. 